Do you know what we are going to talk about today? No? Sure. Hey YouTube, what's up? My name is Nico, I'm a director and photographer and on this channel I teach you how to take pictures and videos. It's an entire series dedicated to photography basics. On the menu today, focus and autofocus modes. I explain all the secrets to have a sharpened image. So are you ready? Well, let's start. I mean, before that I spent quite some time to make the intro, so... Intro. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, we already talked about readability, you and me, and I explained to you that the role of the photographer is to guide the reader eyes on the point of interest of a picture. For this, one of the main tools is the depth of field, which determines which area is clear and which area is blurred in an image. The more contrast there is between the two, in the sense that the more a part is blurred and the other one is clear, the clearer the element will come out. If you already feel like I'm speaking to you in Chinese, you need to quickly go and watch this video. And since YouTube is global, maybe there are Chinese people watching me. Ni hao, ni hao ma, ni shan pei shou ma? Sorry if I took your language as an example, Chinese friend, but it's not easy. Actually, I'm French. I guess it's not the easier language either. Since you already know how to create a nice blur in the background with the aperture, you no need to know how to take care of the sharp elements of your image. Yes, I know what you're going to say to me. Hey, I have a great camera, I press on it, it beeps and then it's all clear. Yeah, well, that's the autofocus. Everyone has it, don't get too excited. But do you know how it works? Okay, let's go and test it on the field. If you have a DSLR, switch your lens to manual mode just for a second. By turning the dedicating ring, you will determine the focus, which is where the sharp point of your image will be. So it's a measure of distance, in centimeters or meters. Here I am at the minimum. Generally, except on the so-called macro objective, the minimum focusing distance is around 30 cm, which means that an object placed closer than 30 cm will necessarily be blurred. The maximum focus can be done on infinity, which is perfect when you do landscape photography, for example. Luckily, in 99% of cases, you won't be doing the focus manually. Your camera will do it for you. So how does this magic autofocus work? Look in the camera viewfinder. What do you see? A whole lot of little rectangles with a dot in the middle. You can have more or less depending on your camera. This is called AF points, which represent the electronic cells that measure autofocus. We'll find different types, horizontal or vertical rectangular IF points, which are the least efficient, and you file them on entry-level SLRs. It's easier on those types of IF points to focus for certain simple shapes, horizontal or vertical. When you go up in range, the IF points are square. It's actually a combination of two rectangles in a cross shape, which allows much better performance. On most of professional cameras, the best of the best are the star IF point. Similarly, the number of IF points is different from one body to another. Obviously, the more expensive it is, the more of them there are. And the more there are, the more the autofocus will be accurate. Kinda. To operate, the IF point will make a contrast measurement to determine where to focus. That's why it's impossible to focus on a solid color wall or the blue sky, for example. If you try, you will have a pumping effect. The autofocus engine keeps trying to focus unsuccessfully. But because, regardless of its name, a knife point is an area and not a point, it will be looking for the most contrasted zone to focus on. It may happen that it doesn't do it well, especially if you let it automatically select which knife point to use in the image. Luckily, you have the opportunity to choose yourself which knife point you want to use for the focus. That's huge, right? Unfortunately, I can't show you because it depends on the camera. Have a look at your user manual. Usually, it's a button that looks like that, or you have a little joystick that lets you do it like that. Otherwise, for those who have a touchscreen live view, you can set the focus directly on it. But honestly, using the live view for the photo? No, it's cool. Thanks to that, you'll greatly increase your chances to having a good focus. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it works every time. Yeah, sometimes if you are on a wide aperture, the depth of field is really very small and the IF point, as I said, is an area. So you think you're focused on the pupil of an eye, for example, when in fact you're focused on the eyebrow. And beam, that's enough to have the eye blurred. Well, this happens not so often, but just so that you know that you can't get a 100% success rate. So you select your half point, you do your focus, but you also have the opportunity to tell your camera 
how you want the autofocus to behave. Indeed, there are different modes available. This one, you already know it. It's the one you've been using without knowing it. AFS or one shot for Canon. Why Canon change always the name of the... Ah! This is the basic mode and the simplest. You point, you trigger halfway, the focus is done, bit bit. As long as you hold it down, if you move or your subject move, the focus does not change. Once you trigger, click, it reinitialize and you press again, a new focus is done. It's great for very still subject. The AFC mode? Hmm, how could we call it so we don't have to do like the others? AI servo. It's a continuous mode that never stops. You don't have a confirmation beep. The AF point will track the movement to try to follow a subject. When you press the shutter release button, the last focus applies. It's a great mode that will save your life in some cases, for example in concert for sport photo, or if you're photographing uh, the stuff, what is the word already? Um, uh, the, the stuff that stings and still run everywhere, the, the kids. They do not Some smell. of them smell. <laughs> Baby smell. As soon as your subject is moving, this mod can do miracles in most of the cases. But also in low light, if you have a shallow depth of field, even a very small movement can ruin your focus. Not with the IFC mod. On some camera, you also have a mod called AFA. It's simply the best of both worlds. It's an IFS mode, so pressing the release button halfway and it keeps the same focus until it detects motion in the image. Then it goes straight into continuous mode. Beam, it starts to track the previous focus area. Pretty cool. Well, yeah, there are other modes, but we won't talk about this now. It's not on all cameras, it depends on the brand. For example, you have eye tracking or other stuff. Once again, check your user manual to see what you have on your camera or don't have. I'm gonna tell you how I personally work, but be careful because it's just my personal preference and it won't necessarily fit yours. To start with, I do a lot of video where manual focus is like standard, so it doesn't scare me much and sometimes I use it, but let's stay on the autofocus. I personally really I really like the AFM mode. However, given that I mostly shoot portraits, I'm usually in AFS mode and I rarely use the selection of AF point. Yeah, I know what I told you. You have the opportunity to choose yourself which AF point you want to use for the focus. That's you, right? And yeah, I believe it. Besides, you see that sometimes you have no other choice. If you don't tell the camera which AF point to use, the autofocus will do but for my main practice of photography, I use the technique of focus framing. I use the central AF point because it's the most accurate one. I focus on the eye of the model and then while keeping down the shutter halfway so that I don't lose my focus, I reframe my image as once before I shoot. It gives something like this. For me, it's the most efficient and fastest way to do it, again for my personal use of photography. I have to think about framing, I direct the model, I do not have time to change my focus all the time. Anyway, this is my way of doing things, but you won't necessarily do the same. To find out what works best for you, you have to know and understand each mod and even more to test each of them for a quite long time. This is the only way for you to find what suits you best and how you feel most comfortable working. So, what are you still doing here? Oh, I know, it's because you haven't had the time to put a like under the video yet or to subscribe by clicking on the little bell. Go ahead, it's just there, somewhere. And once you're done writing a comment, which I guess it's going to look like something like, wow, that video was amazing. I have learned so much. You're a genius, mate. Only then you can take your camera and go have fun testing all this. See you, mate. Keep on creating.